Hey, Craig here. In this video, I'm going to be doing what they call the validation of installation. Basically, I'm just going to be going through all the various functions, make sure everything is working okay with the mill. And then after that, I'll do the uh, uh, basic operation of the mill. All right. Okay, so the first step is to verify to make sure that it uh, turns on. All right, so I'm going to, uh, on the side here, turn the power switch on. This button, this uh, switch right here, turn that on. And then wait for Path Pilot to come up. Okay, Path Pilot is now up. And I'm going to take the e-stop off and push the start button. And I can now see that the machine light is on. Now I'm going to click the reset button there. And the red light has come on for the computer. So that is it for the startup. Okay, so now to turn the mill off, I'm going to depress the stop button and I'm going to click exit over here click OK and when it tells me it's now turn, safe to turn it off on this switch over here I'm going to switch that off and that's it for turning it off. Okay, so the next step is to verify the uh, spindle operation. Uh, I'm going to switch it to the manual position. And then click start. I'll put a piece of blue tape on there so you can see it spinning. And I will verify the speed. So that's definitely working. Now I'm going to hit the uh, reverse button, and it should stop and this, and then reverse, and then again click forward. It'll stop and then go the other way, and then I'll hit the stop button, and it stops. And now to verify the spin to lockout. I will uh, turn the spindle lockout switch to off and try starting it. It starts a little bit and then it stops. So I know that function is working. And that's it for the uh, spindle uh, verification. Okay, so the next step is to verify that the limit switches are working. Uh, to do that, I have to loosen the uh, four screws that are holding on this front drip edge or whatever it's called. So I loosen those and pull this guard off. And I've got one switch right there. I'm going to go to Path Pilot and go to the status page and over here we've got the uh, the indicators for the axes the uh, the switch that I just uncovered obviously is the the X so I'm going to go ahead and depress this and see that it indicates on here but you can see that it does, it's going on and off 
Uh, also do the same for the Y. The Y is right here. So I'll go ahead and push this. Uh, sorry, Z, sorry. Z. Um, so I'm pushing the Z and the Z light is lighting. In path pilot. And then of course the Y, which is kind of hard to show, but it's down underneath here. So I'll go ahead and hit that. And you can see that's working. Okay, so it looks like all the limit switches are working. All right. Okay, of course after testing the limit switches I have to click the uh, reset. And then I'm going to go ahead and reference my axis starting with Z. Uh, usually you reference Z first in case there happens to be a uh, fourth axis or something that's mounted to the mill uh, or the vise or something. So you want it to go up first. So I'm going to reference Z. And you can see uh, the, the head is going up to the limit switch. And then I will do the other two. Y and Z. And they are both referenced. Alright. And then the next thing to do is to uh, check the, uh, the function. And I'm going to do that by just using the, uh, the keyboard. Um, page up, page down would be the head, so I'm going to want to, it's already at the top, so I'm going to want to page down. So I can see that is working. And then the uh, arrow. Uh, I'm already the, the extents that way, so I'm going to want to bring the head uh, this way. So I'm going to go uh, right. And I can see the table is moving. And then I'm going to want to bring it forward. So arrow down. And there it goes. Okay, and then of course I will then confirm. I already did a video on the uh, the jog shuttle, but the uh, verify that the uh, jog shuttle is working. Go to uh, Z and go up and down on Z. Y X. And of course, step. Okay, so it looks like that's all working. Okay, the next step is to uh, test the uh, the coolant, the automatic coolant. Uh, of course, I don't have the the coolant system hooked up yet, so I thought I'd use my uh, uh, Pixar style lamp here. And uh, so I plugged this into the outlet underneath where the uh, coolant system would normally plug in. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn it on here. There we go. So that's working. It's got on, off, and auto. Can't really test auto unless I'm running code or something, but you can see that's uh, working there. But Okay, well it looks like any customization to uh, PathPilot is done through the MDI uh, on the main tab here. So in order to change the date, you type uh, admin space D-A-T-E and that takes you to the 
uh, the date and time, which you can then go ahead and change. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to... Uh, okay. And further customization, uh, you can customize the keyboard. Um, if you're not using a, a regular keyboard, um, but there may be other things you can customize in there, I don't know. Um, it says, uh, admin keyboard. So go... It looks like it gives you different options. Uh, it just talks about changing the layout. I guess, I guess you can change it from US to United Kingdom. Maybe you can add some. Um, there's other various options in here. Uh, how fast do you want the mouse to go? Uh, general layout. Anyways, I guess that's it. Alright. And there's an option for touch screen if you have a touch screen to change to touch screen. Okay, well that basically wraps up the the last of the installation. I'm basically just going over the what's in the manual. Um you know, after you have the mill installed in there, um and the verifications verifying function, all that is uh all part of that installation. And then after that, basically gets into the basic operation. And a lot of this basic operation is the stuff that I already had talked about. There's a few of the things that I'll cover. Um, but I figured I would just do kind of a close-up on the control panel so you can see uh, all the different buttons on there. Um, just get your stop, start. This is uh, an accessories uh, for like a digitizing um, passive and act uh, the different types of probes. Instead of like using an edge finder, it basically does it automatically. Um, then you get the spindle lockout. If you want to lock this out, you can turn the spindle off and take the key out so the spindle never turns. Uh, of course, the RPM. Um, the manual and auto uh, for the for the spindle, um, and then start stop of the spindle forward and reverse, and of course you get the on and off. The computer I usually just leave it on on, so when I turn the switch on it comes on. Uh, coolant I will leave it on auto uh, uh, because the the computer will the uh, the code the G code will c control that. And, um, oh, there's one other thing about, uh, the, to use the, uh, spindle speed control in path pilot. Like, if you want to control it in there, you'd have to switch it on auto also, so. Okay, so the next thing is to, uh, change the, the belt, uh, the speed range with the, uh, belt. So I'm going to open this up here. And actually, I'm going to shut off the power when I do this here. I'm not sure if it said it on there, but it just uh, seems to be a smart thing to do. I will uh, exit path pilot. And shut off the controller. Okay. Uh, I don't know, the, the, the book shows there's actually a, a wing nut to, to loosen the, uh, the motor, but uh, mine doesn't have one. Mine just has a, a bolt. So, as you can see over here, so I'm going to loosen this bolt and use this 
right here as a lever to uh, to push on to put tension on the belt when I change it. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the bolt here and pull this forward. And that loosens the uh, the belt in there. Now I'm just going to change this to the upper position. And I think I'll just do this, uh, I think I need two hands, I'll just change it and then come back. Okay, definitely way easier to do it with uh, two hands. So, I got up that on the top there now. I'm going to uh, push back on this, get my wrench, push back on this. Make sure there's a uh, tension on here. The book says to have about an eighth to a quarter of an inch play when you push on the belt like this. So go ahead and push on that and then tighten the bolt back down. Okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. And now that that's done, we'll uh, flip this back up. And actually, while I'm in here, I will go over the uh, the collet. Well, it's actually loose. So in the last video, I just kind of stuck it in. Basically, you just have the collet, the drawbar. The drawbar goes down in there. Collet is inserted and turned until it aligns, and then tightened up loosely. Like that. And then let me close this back up. Now after changing the belt position, you definitely need to go back into Path Pilot and change what setting that belt is on. Because if you don't, all your feeds that are put in, that are sent to the, to the machine, uh, through G-code is going to be wrong and it's going to be moving at the wrong speed, the wrong RPM. So let me boot it back up and I'll show that. Okay, so as you can see uh, right here, the the spindle range is right here. I just changed it from low to high, so I need to select that so Path Pilot knows uh, what belt you're using and basically how how fast to turn it to get the spindle to turn in the the correct uh, speed, so... I uh, my uh, Tormach vise came in, so I'm going to be putting the vise on there, tramming it up, and, uh, alright. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave, feel, leave, feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Alright, thanks.